Welcome to our show, Film Talk with AJ Dean. I'm AJ Dean, your host, and I have the always funny and always dependable <laughs> co-host with me, Paul Votto. Hey, Paul. Well, okay, well, you know, you're there when we need you, Paul. How are you, Paul? I'm, I'm 100% available today, so thank you for having me. Uh, it is so wonderful to see both of your beautiful, smiling faces, and I'm just so excited about today's interview, but most importantly... AJ, thank you uh, for always allowing me to be a part of this. It's so, it's so enjoyable. Thank you. Thank you. You get to meet some great, wonderful people. And we have a beautiful actress in the building today, Chloe Tracos. She is an actress, a writer, and producer from California, Los Angeles. Let's give her a very warm welcome. Hello, beautiful Chloe. How are you today? I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for that wonderful introduction, AJ. Appreciate it. <laughs> well, you are. You're such a delight. And we're so glad that you're here with us today. So let's get right into it. I know Paul has some questions. And um, I, okay, so I'll start with, you're an incredible actress. You have lived in uh, you were born in Zimbabwe That's right and you uh now live in California where is your favorite place as an actress to live and why oh that's a good question you know um I think uh I mean I love living in California but I have to say uh when you're making an independent film uh, it's better to be in Australia because um it people there are very um it's a, it, it's very much a, how do I say this? They are, um, it, you know, you basically you find a lot of talented actors who um, basically will work for a fraction of the price, just to put it bluntly, um, when you're making a smaller budget film like I do. Um, uh, however, having said that, in Los Angeles, there are many more actors who you get to meet because the film industry is bigger. And it's wonderful there from that perspective and that you have many more people who are like you, who are doing what you do and and who are basically, you know, in the same boat as you, just trying to get out there, get themselves out there. So so I I, I got to say, I like them both. I like both Australia and, um, and LA. I mean, when I was living in Zimbabwe, I was still a kid. I wasn't, you know, doing anything like this then. And, but... Um, you know, definitely. Yeah. But I think, yeah, I mean, I think Australia and, um, and, and LA are both equally good with, with acting, yeah, with actors. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Los Angeles is great because it has all those resources as well. That's fascinating to find out that Australia is very um, accepting and welcoming. I love that. Yes. Yes. It's a, uh, yep. Yeah. Mm. Have you heard that before, Paul? Yes. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it would be wonderful. I would love to, you know me, I love a good story uh, of a of, you know, background story. Somebody born uh, in Zimbabwe from, I would imagine, immigrant parents that went to Zimbabwe, or I'd love to get to the bottom of that. Uh, and then, uh, you know, uh, Australia and then L.A. and then especially being in the film industry. But I, I have heard I have heard something you know, similar and I would love to be able to travel and, and go to uh, Australia and visit my friends there and do some acting there as well. But, you know. Uh, I would have to get a worker's permit, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, I think I think Americans can travel there for like, I think you can go over for like three months or something without a, yeah, if you, if you just go on a, on a visit. Um, but yeah, but I, um, did, I, you know, going up in Zimbabwe, there really is no film industry. And there was one theater in town. And, um, and I joined the teenage theater group that they had, they would have every Friday night. And um and so it's really, um, and and so it's it's it is kind of odd someone coming from that part of the world. Just you know, my whole life I knew I wanted to be an actor. So um, yes, it's 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 yeah, sort of kind of a long journey, both um, geographically and you know, kind of where you where you've come from. Yes, and so you, uh, Paul touched a moment ago on um, your background, um, Trakos. Uh, can you yes. tell us about your name and your parents uh, from Greek? Is that right? My dad's family are Greek. Yes, my mom's family are a mixture from the Ukraine, Bulgaria, Ireland, Fr France. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm actually. Yep, yeah, I was 
se- the second generation Zimbabwean. Um, both my parents, uh, my mom was born in Zimbabwe. My dad actually was born in Egypt. Um, even yeah, um, and um, just to make it more complicated, but yeah, but um, <laughs> but Zimbabwe was. I mean, it was basically very much a. Uh, I mean, I guess it was like America. You know, it was kind of a. It was a British colony. You know, so you had people from all over the world living there, and. Um, yeah, so that that's where you know that that's that was kind of where I was born. My um, you know, um, and um, yeah, and where I lived until I left school. Yes, and uh, you, oh, go ahead, Paul. No, no, I was going to ask, what was the name of? Sorry, sorry, hang on. What was the name of the restaurant that your father owned in Greece? <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. Thank um, you. You and have- that's very funny. Um, I, I, you, my dad would appreciate that joke. Um, actually, you know what's funny in Zimbabwe? It's not so much. Well, yeah, actually, there are a lot of Greeks owned restaurants in Zimbabwe, but um, my uh, it also is they owned what we refer to as Greek cafes, which cafes in Zimbabwe term is really a mom and pop store. Um, so you'd have a lot of those, like you'd have the 24 hour mom and pop stores run by the Greek family that would always be open at all hours of what well, wasn't wasn't quite 24 hours, but they were the place that like closed at 10 o'clock on a Sunday night when in Zimbabwe, everything closed at five. So that was the place you kind of went to for your last minute stuff. So, so yeah, that was a another joke, but you know, that people always used to mis- make about the Greek stereotypes, but yeah, yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. The, um, yeah, no, I mean, actually it's funny. There were plenty of Greek restaurants growing up in Zimbabwe and we were friends with like all of the owners and um, yes, it's. <laughs> well, if Hadi still for, for answering that and uh, thank you, th- thank you for, I mean, it's, it's obviously it's a joke, but uh, thank you for finding it funny because that's so like, oh, I'll I know, I know, I know. I, I feel for you comedians in today's world. Everyone gets offended at everything. <laughs> have to be yeah, so- yeah, yeah. That's the last thing <laughs> no. I want to do. No, but, no, I, I, uh, I'm, I'm pretty much like, look, I, I lived in Australia. Um, Australians, nothing is sacred. So, um, you're pretty safe with anything you say to me. <laughs> wonderful. Wonderful. I love hearing that because, and, and that's one of the reasons I do want to visit Australia. Obviously, you know, there's comedians like Jim Jeffries. But now recently I've connected with, with a few friends, you know, because of social audio, like Rocksteady from Australia and a few, I mean, and, and you're right, there's there's no, nothing sacred. And I nothing love that. Sacred, just, I know it's, it's wonderful. It's very, um, you know, I have a terrible story to tell about my parents. My parents are Zimbabwean and Zimbabwean is very, Zimbabweans are very um sort of very kind of like the British can be very prim and proper. And my, my parents are very like that. And I had a wonderful, I have a wonderful comedian friend who was performing one night and he kept offering me free tickets to his shows. And I was always busy. But the one night I was able to take him, I said, thank you. But at the last minute, my parents were, I was living in Sydney. My parents were living in Perth. My parents at the last minute decided to surprise me with a visit. And I said to them, I said, look, I can't let you, I can't let Peter down. I've already committed to go to his show and I'm sure he won't mind getting you tickets, but you're going to have to come with me to a comedy show. And my parents were like, oh, that's fine. And this was in a, in a neighborhood called Parramatta, which is one of the roughest neighborhoods in Sydney. Now, Peter, my friend, is a very good, classy comedian. However, all the acts before him, there was almost like there was a competition in how many times they could say the F word and the C word. And I was just sitting there with both my parents literally wanting to die. And my mother would kept saying, darling, there's a lot of swearing here. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and it was just like one of those nights which you don't forget. And but it was it was it was funny, but it was also funny being there with my parents and their reactions. Yep. Amazing. Amazing. It, that is a great story, actually, because, you know, your father is an international cricket star and your mother, Annette, yes. is an artist. So do you think you got those genes, those creative genes passed down, Chloe? Um, I uh, I definitely don't have any um, genes regarding painting or art. <laughs> but, but yes, I mean, people always say, well, writing and acting is a form of art. So I guess, yes. But um yeah um and um and my dad's cricket genes i i mean yes i do have i i've always been good with sort of throwing catching playing tennis like i have that those kind of sports i've always been good at but yeah but it's um yeah yeah but yeah no the the writing acting side is yeah i guess it's you could say it's artistic um i get it from my mom's side oh my dad is very creative as well yep yeah, you have to be um, to be an international um, cricket uh, star. Yeah, you've got to be on your toes, right? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, okay, I did want to jump in, and we've got these great movie posters 
on screen, on your second screen, we've got Introducing Jodea. And that is from, um, was that 20, let, let me look on my notes here, 2020. Um, 2021. 2021, thank you. Last year, yeah. And it's a beautiful poster. I love it. I want to talk about that first. And then we also have The Righteous Gemstones, which is a TV series by HBO Max. And mm -hmm. that was uh, your episode that you starred on. That was 2019. So let's talk about introducing. Oh, there, there were two. There was 2019 and 20 and one this year as well. Yep. So I was, I was in I was in two seasons. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Oh, that's great. That's even better. Thank you, Chloe. Um, so let's talk about introducing Jodea. Uh, the film. It's a wonderful concept because this is about a guy. He has to make you a star, right? You you right. star as Jodea. Can you tell us about it? Yes, sure. So it's basically about a, a very talentless actress who um, one day fortunes change when a world famous director drives into the back of her car and she says to him, um, you know, don't um, don't give me any money. Just put me in your next movie. And um, and she auditions for his next movie and she's terrible. But then he makes a bet with his agent. His agent says, you can never get a performance out of her. And he says, I could. And so he has a week to do it in. Um, and so, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. And then it's kind of this involves into this like uh, Pygmalion love story. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it in a nutshell. So that's wonderful. So the, the challenge is on. And so you had to play someone who didn't have any acting skills. How How was that? That's kind of hard because you've got great acting skills so how did you how did you do that <laughs> that was very funny in fact you know during the rehearsals the director kept saying to me he said chloe you're acting too well um, <laughs> you need to go over the top and be really really bad and um and so uh sorry my kitty's here he just wants to say hello hey, uh, Hi, hey. hello oh he's so beautiful is he's a beauty and he loves he he loves people and whenever i'm on a phone call or a zoom call he always wants to know what's going on and why he, he wants to take part well he's so, um, most welcome oh he's very he's he's a, he's a sweet baby um but yeah, yes. Yeah. So uh, yes, what was I saying? Yes. Yeah, so so yes. Yeah, so that was the story of interesting journey. It was also like a lot of it was based on. I had many negative. Ex I mean, well, anyone who's been in the in, in the business knows there, there's so many negative experiences you have, and I just kind of put it all together and made it a comedy. To, um, you know, um, more as like a stereotype of of Hollywood. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So you starred in this. Did you uh, write as well part of it and produce yes. it? No, I I wrote it and um and then. Uh, yep. And then my friend John Cohen directed it. Yeah. I'm so proud of you because you know me. I My heart is I love women starring, directing and writing. You know me. I always talk about that. It's so important. Yes. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud. Of, I've seen the trailer. It's wonderful. Uh, how can people watch it? How can we watch it? Sure. Well, that's what it's on Amazon Prime. It's on most of the main, um, all the main platforms. But right now, in fact, if you get it this week on Amazon Prime and iTunes, it's going for half price. Um, it's just a special we're running just for this week. Um, but yeah, but I mean, I think it's, you know, I mean, a lot of people have enjoyed it. I mean, I see it as a girly movie, but I've had a lot of guys who've enjoyed it too. Um, and it's it's a feel good story. And I think it came out at the right time. It came out end of 2021, um, which was where people were just had enough of COVID and depressing and bad news and illness and everything bad and lockdown. And people needed something positive. And I think it was what people needed at that time. And it's, you know, it's a feel good movie. It's just, it's, you know, only, you know, it's, I, I've always loved feel good movies. So, um, you know, so yeah, so I encourage people to watch it and just, it, you know, it's just, it's just nice, lighthearted. And, you know, if you want to go on a date, it's definitely a first date movie. Um, so, yeah. What do you think, Paul? I I, I love it. I, I love, I love the whole concept and it just it speaks volumes about actors like we it, we're not doing it for the money just put me in no. your project i'd be happy to do it so it talks to that uh i love the fact that it's uh it, it, you can draw on all the experiences that we've had from auditions from mm -hmm. actually working with projects from working yes. with people that were not good actors but they didn't know it maybe they thought they were yes. great oh yes yes i mean all, all that and it just i love the you know the behind the scenes commentary here where where you know you're told like okay you're acting too well like this doesn't work and yes. it's, it's not easy to act poorly you know and then transition i right. guess you know? yes yeah it's not an easy thing to ask of you you know so well yes well, well you had to i had to get myself into that way of thinking which was she actually thinks she's acting well 
And, um, you know, so it's, uh, yeah. you know, and, um, and so that was, yeah, that, that was, that was how I got around that. Cause at first I was like, oh my gosh, I can't convince myself that this is that I think this is good, but yeah, it, you just, I just, you know, I had to, to get into that way of thinking. Yeah. What and you I needed that for the project and for the park. And then you mentioned, uh, you know, that it did well specifically, I think, you know, part of it being, and I remember at the end of 2021 where people were just frustrated and needed to laugh. So I'm glad, I'm sure that that was part of it, but I'm also sure it's just well done and I would love to watch it. So I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can uh, watch it there on Amazon Prime, which I have or download it from iTunes. And uh, like you said, it's half price. So uh, yeah, yeah. what a great deal. Yes, I'm going to do that too, Paul. I'm going to watch it too this week. Thanks for letting us know and for all the viewers that it's half price, Chloe, because uh, jump on this because it's a fun movie. And like you said, it's a feel good movie. Yes. Um, and you had fun doing it. So I'm so honored and proud of you. I just love that you put it out there. And you look, look at the beautiful poster of it. I mean, movie posters, you know, I love movie posters because it's part of my niche in my show. And That's I right. just, it's beautiful. You're in a beautiful red dress and he's in a tux. And it's just such a nice, um, it's a piece of art to me. So I love that. So thank you. Oh, for thank that. you. Yes, no, we had, um, yeah, no, no, we had a great photographer and great uh, poster designer. So yes, it was, um, yeah, no, no, it's, it is, it is, I mean, it's kind of, you know, it is, it's hopefully it's a, it's supposed to people will, that will make people want to see the film. That's the idea. Yeah. Yes. And so now you, now switching to TV with the Righteous Gemstones, you were in uh, two episodes of that TV HBO Max series. So what do you, you know, tell us a little bit about that. And then also, what do you prefer? Do you prefer film, independent film, or do you like this TV studio film? Um, I mean, I have to say it was like a, I mean, yes. Yeah, so, so the Righteous Gemstones. Um, I, uh, I got the audition through my agent. I filmed the audition on the Sunday, and um, and I tell people, um, which it now it actually, you know, I gave an interview where I talked about this, and it ended up making headlines. Um, but they basically said to me, "How did you get the role in the Righteous Gemstones?" And I said, "Because I lied, because they asked that they asked us as part of the thing, give your name, give your height, and your agent, and and can you drive a tractor." And so, of course, every actor, everyone knows that actors will say anything to get a role. So I said, yes, of course, I can drive a tractor. And I gave the story of how I grew up in Zimbabwe and my uncle had a farm and I often drove his tractor. Um, so um, I uh, I did my audition and I sent it in on the Sunday. And then on Tuesday at noon, I got word I got the role. So, of course, it's like that I had to fly out that night. But I'm like in between packing for the airport and stuff. I'm going on to YouTube going, how do you drive a tractor? <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and I'm completely freaking out. And um, then, of course, when I showed up, thankfully, when we shot that the day that was supposed to be the big tractor day, they changed it. Thankfully, the tractor was more of a toy tractor, which not one of these huge things. And secondly, they made Walton Goggins drive it. They wanted me riding on the back. So I was like, OK, cool. I'm really glad I lied. But oh. um, but it was funny because I told that in an interview. And then um, sorry, this is an aside. I'm interrupting myself here. But then, yeah, I was driving along the other day and um had to pull over to check my um my Google Maps. And suddenly this, you know, um this headline appears, you know, when you have headlines appearing in Google and it said, Righteous Gemstone Star Admits to Lying at Audition. And I was like, oh my God. And I, yeah. And so like this, this interview I'd given had gone viral about that. And I was just, yep. So that was, um, Sorry, there was that story. So, so yeah, so basically I, the story I tell is, yes, I, I got the role because I told them I could drive a tractor, but it ended up being irrelevant. But um, no, it was it was super fun um, being on set of Gemstones. I mean, I love independent film because it's almost like, because it's much smaller um, and everyone's like your family and you're like in it together and you work together and when they problems, you face them together. But the thing with that, but being on the set, a set like Gemstones, it's just, it's wonderful because like you have, um, it just, you know, it's like, I didn't have to worry about anything other than my role. And that was wonderful. And, um, you know, whereas, whereas it's your own project, you're on the set, you got to worry about this, you got to worry about how we're going for time, are we going to get it all in? So um, I definitely, I mean, yeah, I definitely, I mean, I definitely love doing gemstones. I mean, looking back on Jordan and now, yes, I love it. I would do it all again. But it was, you know, there was a lot of stress involved. I mean, uh, before we shot Jodea, I mean, the director flew out from Australia. He got a visa. Um, for, he got a visa for the shoot, and then, um, but we had a limited time. We only had a six-week window because he was doing all kinds of things in Australia. And then, literally three days before we shot, both our production designer and our production manager pulled out. So we were stuck with a skeleton crew. And so John, the director, and myself literally were 
doing everyone's job. So it was like at night before when I literally should have been concentrating on my lunch the next day and getting enough sleep. I was going online. I was seeing, I was making sure we had enough extras. I was making sure we had this prop and this prop. And I was basically doing the production manager and production designer's job as was John. So it was a nightmare of a shoot, um, but we made it through and we did a good job if I do say so. But it was, um, yeah, I mean, compared with that for gemstones, I mean, of course, it's a breath of fresh air. You don't have to, have to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Can you relate to that, Paul? Oh, a hundred percent. Especially, uh, especially just just now that I saw my friend Del Zamora at his movie screening, uh, The Last Brown Beret, uh, and knowing his story because you know he was that one man. You know, he produced it, directed it. He's he's right. acting in it. And sure, it came from a play, so they already had their lines memorized. So it was a little bit easier, but there was still all these other logistics oh, yeah. to take care of when you're kind of a one, when you're a one person show and it's hilarious at the end, it's, it's you know, because eventually when he gets paid, if he sells it to Amazon or or Hulu or Netflix, you know, set designer, Del Zamora, production, Del Zamora, production. I mean, it was right, like, right. It's, you know, but, but his accountant said, he goes, you have to, because eventually you're going to need to get reimbursed for this. You know, uh, he hasn't taken any money from it yet, but, you know, they need to know who did what parts, you know, for tax reasons and things like that. So he was a little embarrassed to do that, but he's literally done everything on the set. Good and then, him. you know, me, I went to work on the TV show, Ted, which is uh, Seth MacFarlane's new show. And it's oh, wonderful. Wow. Here's, <laughs> thank you. Here's, here's your trailer, Mr. Vato. Okay. Oh, yes, I know. We'll, it's we'll, like, <laughs> we'll call you, we'll, call, you know, we'll come get you. Oh, knock, knock, knock. Uh, they need you in wardrobe. Okay. Uh, knock, knock, knock. Right. They need you in makeup. Okay. Uh, okay. You're, you're in about 10 minutes. We'll head to the set. Okay. Uh, here's your ride. I mean, it just, everything is done oh, for I you. And all you got to do is know the lines. I love it. I know it's fantastic. It was like, I mean, when I got my, I mean, my own trailer, I'd never had that before. And it's there and it's got my name on the door and it's just, oh, it's, it's so super exciting. Um, And then it was like, you know, it was like, well, because gemstones was so last minute, like, I mean, as I said, I got the one on the Tuesday, we shot on the Wednesday and Thursday. And so it's literally, I hadn't signed the contract yet. So I'm signing the contract before I go on set and I'm looking. And of course, you know what they are paying you. I'm looking at this and it's like more money. And I'm kind of like thinking, am I reading this right? And, and you know, um, and then you just like, and they're like, yeah, can you please sign? We need you on set. No, I'm like, okay, okay. <laughs> are, are you, you'll, you'll sign anything. You know, they bring it to your trailer. Exactly, sign, exactly. I don't even read it almost. I mean, I'll skim it over. But and it's I'm also like, like, I mean, and I don't, I mean, to me, it's like, yeah, I don't care. I mean, I would pay people to do this as I do. I do pay people so that I can do this. So it's just, the, the money has never been an issue for me. Oh, the, the horrible part is I, even though, my only job was to know my lines. I still managed to screw that up in one of the takes. So oh, I was no. like, <laughs> that's like, <laughs> what, 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 you know, Seth MacFarlane was like, oh, could we drop the, the what? Because I said, you know what? And it was just supposed to be, you know, and then go on with my lines. Uh, I won't say them now because I don't want to ruin that surprise. But, uh, and I was like, oh yeah, of course. <laughs> like, I don't oh, that's know funny. what I was that's... thinking, sir. Like, sorry. Uh, oh, I wasn't trying to change it. I just, I was just so in the moment, I think that I, that it I happened. added, uh, but but it, it goes it just goes to show for the actors, you know, just do the line as it's written because the writers, directors, they don't need your input unless they ask you or then they ask you to improvise. Then sure, but uh, yeah, just <laughs> read it as yeah, read it's, it's written. Um yeah i mean i did yeah yeah for, for sure i mean i don't know i find um with my stuff i'm not precious with my writing and i find sometimes some i mean yes sometimes they'll say things wrong but sometimes some actors actually improve the lines <laughs> and they'll be like oh sorry i got the wrong right no actually that's fine keep it yeah i come from an improv background so i i love it but i also respect what's on the page right you right. know yeah, yeah. no it, no i I, I love um but I, I, yeah, yeah. If, I mean, I, I'm also not married to, to to my words. If you if you know if it sounds better, sometimes yeah. it does, sometimes it doesn't. But you know, as long as we get the message across. But again, I think it's my improv background that's like, yeah, why why write anything down? Let's just improvise this. Well, I, I yeah, I, I love that. I love actors who are good at improv. I mean, the one scene in Jodea, which um you got where you know uh, um uh it with two of the actors who were both fantastic at improv. I didn't have much to say in this scene. But John said to them, just you guys take over. And it was hilarious. And I was just standing there trying so hard not to laugh. But it was it was it's one of my favorite scenes in it. But yeah, I, I, I love improv and I love actors who can just do it so easily. 
It really is a gift. And so we appreciate you, um, Paul, and thank you so much for that share, Chloe. Um, I did want to ask, you are, I also want to highlight you that you're a writer as well, and you've written on several films like Unforgivable Sin in 2016 and Devil's Cove yes. um, in 2018. So I want to ask you, how does a writer, being a writer, how does that help you be an actress or vice versa? Does it? Um, yeah, it does. I, th I think the two are very strongly connected. I mean, I personally believe that if you're good at one, you're going to be good at the other. There, there is definitely a connection with the writing and the acting gene. And I find also when writing, um, you both help each other. So like when you're preparing for a role and you're acting or you're going around thinking of your character and stuff, uh, you get up, come up with other ideas, which adds to the story. And, you know, and that subsequently helps the writing. And, you know, and it also happens like when you, you, when you improving with other actors, getting into your roles and you come up with stuff and it's like, oh, well, that's a great idea. We've got to put that in there. So I think the two are very closely connected and um, I love that. I definitely love them both. I, you know, want to always do both for the rest of my life. Great. And then also, um, what is your favorite being a director, writer, or actress? What's the number one for you? Well I, well, I don't direct. I only directed Unforgivable Sin, which was my little short. Um, and that was my directing experience. And eh, um, I don't think I'm that great at directing. <laughs> um, but yeah, writing and acting, I love equally. Um, producing, I do because I have to. Um, I don't like it one bit. Um, and um, but yeah, but it's kind of like, you know, you, you, you kind of do have to, you know, it's just it, it's um, I my very first movie, I got burned by a producer who completely messed up the project and ever since then with my projects that I've written and acted and I've always stayed a producer on because I want to have that semblance of control um but I don't like doing it I mean if I could happily pay someone to do all the producing stuff for sure I would you know it's just it's just a horrible I mean no there are people who love doing it but I don't <laughs> Yes, I agree. I agree. And I'm going to go right into our controversial question, which is deal dealing with Hollywood. Um, yes. Every every, uh, sec every uh, section we have uh, on Film Talk a with AJ Dean um, and Paul Vado, the podcast, we have a, a controversial uh, part. And the question is, what is wrong with Hollywood? What needs to be fixed in Hollywood, Chloe? Oh, God. What doesn't? I'm <laughs> sorry. I mean, well, look, when you watch my movie, you'll see a lot of things like I think the one critic described it as I just want to get these exact words because the best description he said, it's a deliciously spiteful love letter to Hollywood. Um, and it's I mean, I the first thing which I, what I find wrong with Hollywood is the fakeness. Mm -hmm. People here don't tell you to your face. So when you approach someone for something with a script or with you want representation, they never say we're not interested or this isn't for us. They always say, oh, I'm so busy right now. To which people like me who are determined as just say, okay, great. Can I come back in six months? And they'll go, oh, sure. And it's garbage. And then in six months, they just completely ghost you. So it's, um, there's just also a level of um, just, sorry, I'm just adjusting myself because my cat jumped off my lap. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, um, there's also there's just a level of, um, I uh, fakeness and sincere uh, you know um you know and like I like so for example um I've told this story to people and and Paul I don't know if you've had experiences like this but um the, you know the first time it happened I didn't believe it like so when we were applying for funding for introducing Jodea before we shot it before I mean we ended up shooting it on 30k because I just thought to hell with it we're going to fund this ourselves but um before that we were aiming for a pretty good budget so I contacted a very well-known producer who will remain nameless and he said, oh, I'm very interested in talking to you about your script. So I was ecstatic. I go to his office. I'm there super early, really prepared, really ready. And he comes in and he goes, where's your name again? And I said, I'm Chloe Trakos. Oh, where's your script again? Uh, introducing Jodea. What was that about? Oh, it's about the actress of the, oh, sorry, it's not for us. And I was like, I mean, you, your hands are kind of tied because he's a big person who could destroy me if he wanted. But I really wanted to just say, well, why the hell did you invite me? You know, you could have ignored my email, which would have probably sent me a reply saying, sorry, but it's not for us. But but the worst thing is that wasn't the only time that happened to me. It happened to me a second time. And then the third time it happened, 
I actually was going to be taking a guy who was going to invest with me to the meeting. And I emailed them before and I didn't, I said, I just want to have it to, to be a hundred percent clear that you are interested in this movie. And the, the, the time was a woman producer. She said, oh yes, we are. So I go with Nick, who is my investor and we sit in on the meeting. And then she says the exact same thing. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not for us. What else do you have? So I don't, get this i don't understand it at all i mean it, i mean if they just want to meet me and talk to me about what else i have then say that yeah. you know you know so that's um yeah that was a huge thing i had with um you know and it's just and it's just it's just inconsiderate it's just rude and it's you know it's like you know i my time's special too you know just don't I don't get those, I don't get those games at all. Right. Um, you know, I, I agree 100%. Um, and I want to say, I'm sorry that you had to go through that, Chloe. Um, you probably dressed up, got all ready, went yes, down to the studio, yeah. uh, took time to to prepare your notes and, and your pitch and everything. Right. And then it's like, uh, and, it, you know, I mean, it was just, yeah. So it's just, it's, it's I, I mean, I don't get it. I mean, you know, it's just, I, I, I have, I mean, as I just said, so that's, you know, my main thing with Hollywood is people aren't honest with you. They can't tell you, uh, you know, to your face, they can't, you know, and I, and, and that's the thing is I, you kind of just, you just learn not to trust anyone. It's the way it, you know, it's, it's just, it's the way it's, it's the way it is. I mean, with Jodea, we had the team we had, who stuck with us, who went the whole way through, were fantastic. And I can trust them. I mean, well, John, who directed it, he's directed three of my projects now. And I mean, look, I would trust him with my life. Um, he's Australian. No offense. I'm no offense <laughs> to Hollywood. But, you know, I, I, you know, absolutely. Um, you know, but it's just, unfortunately, there is that element now where I just don't trust people. And, you know, and I see this all the time. I'll have friends saying, oh, and so-and-so is going to, you know, they're going to produce my project. And I just think, mm-hmm, mm -hmm. let's see. And then, of course, six months on the track, oh, I haven't heard from them. And so you just, you kind of just learn that. It's just, it, yeah, it's very sad. I mean, another friend of mine, starry-eyed, came over from Australia. Oh, people here are so nice. I had this meeting, this agent's interested me. So he's now gone back to Australia. You know, it just, it's so, and I don't know why they do it. It just, you know, you don't have to, you know, I, I just don't, I don't get it. I really don't. I agree. And Paul, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Yes, I'd love to hear them too. Uh, wait, can you hear me? Oh yeah, okay. Sometimes I mic myself, I mute myself and then I forget. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's it's uh, it, it's fake, I think that way with, with maybe with some producers. I, I like almost, the, there's, for me, it's almost like a non-fakeness where everyone knows why you're there. Like we're here to make it as actors. So there is that, that there's also, you know, even if you're at a party and, you know, you see people always looking around, like, who should I be talking to? You know, th th that can be a, a little, I guess, overwhelming sometimes, but you know, you're all there kind of to make it and you're going to do and say whatever, just like you, like you uh, uh, embellished the truth on driving a tractor. But, yes. but w we all know that. I think everyone knows that. And, and for producers like that, I think what you need to do, uh, not to put the blame on you by any means, because they shouldn't have even invited you in if this isn't for them. Don't waste your time because your time is just as valuable as theirs. But uh, is I would come up with uh, not not that we're looking for solutions, but come up with two other fake projects, but then be prepared to write them because you never know. You might be like, yeah, there's this other one that takes place on, in space and it's the craziest idea. They're like, yeah, we like that. We like that. So, <laughs> I love you know, that. That's... You, 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 you come in with three or four projects because I feel like you can't just pitch them one thing. You need to pitch them That's a, you yeah, know, yeah, two absolutely. or three and then go, oh, and then my, my th oh, oh, what else I got? Oh, I, I, you know, let, let me tell you what, introducing Jodea, you know, then you pitch them the one you real, the third time is the, the, the real one. But, you know, you always just have to have stuff in your bag and again, make it up. And, but then that's smart I, I think i like that that's really uh, that's what i'm gonna do next time and <laughs> i mean I, and come in with with up to 10 projects and maybe some are real some are not but you know <laughs> tv shows film you know so whatever they want you know or and then you ask them well okay if this isn't for you what are you looking for because i might have yes. something or i might know someone that does yes that is actually something i've learned that's something i learned after my three bad experiences is now i get back then what are you looking for so what are you looking um, for? Yeah, that's um no, I that, that that's really good. I love that. I love it too. Thank you. You know, Paul's a great businessman. He has his own uh, Vato cigars. He um also has his own podcast. He's an actor, and and you have your own business, don't you? Um, with Vato cigars. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Uh, and I have since like the I've been in some kind of business since the 1900s, since 93, 94, with 
a gourmet ice cream and coffee shop. Uh, so that, and then wow. acting, I mean, acting is, is a business, except for now I'm the product instead of ice cream cones, I'm selling Paul Vato. Uh, and then now with Vato cigars, selling cigars. So it's, it's, uh, you know, it's just, it's more personal. I think when we're actors, because now they're not saying no to my ice cream cone, they're saying no to me oh, personally, yeah. yes. but it's, that's it's, what sales are. You know, the more no's you get, yes. eventually you're going to get a yes. So, and, 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 and we, we can't take it personally. That's part of the thing. It's just like, it's, there's so much in rejection in this business. I was just giving advice to someone just this morning who's just starting out and she's so excited. She's got this audition. And I just said, look, if you don't get it, cause the chances are you don't get it first time. Uh, don't take it personally. Don't let it stop you because you, if you do, then you're in the wrong business. You have to be able to take rejection and rejection and rejection and rejection. Um, <laughs> it's what the business is all about. Really and, and more advice on that would be that treat the audition as the job. If yeah. you get an audition, you should be happy. And, and it's true because, you know, like looking back, even on, on this last thing that I did, where it's, it's like you realize that there were probably hundreds, if not thousands of other people that would kill to be there and wanted to be there and maybe even audition to be there. And yeah. somehow you got it. And it, it, you know, it works both ways because I've lost, not lost. It wasn't mine to begin with, but I'll treat, if I get an audition, I'm like, yay, I booked a job. That's, that was, I, I got it because the more of those you get, the more, you know, eventually you will end up on set, but um, you know, and, yes. and, and if, yes, you, if you lose it to somebody else, sometimes it's just like, well, you know what? They decided to go, with an Asian female for that role. But it's worked the other way where maybe they were looking for an Asian female and all of a sudden I end up with it. It's oh, yeah. like, oh, great, you know? Okay, they, they went in a different direction. This time it benefited me. Sometimes it doesn't, you know? So it's we just True. have to stick and it's to like, it. Yeah, and I find with, um, with me having produced as well, being on the other side of the casting table, you actually understand it a lot more. Like I can remember when we auditioned people for my first movie, there'd be someone who was excellent. And I'd say to the director, that's definitely the person we're giving the role to. And then someone else would come in like 10 minutes later and they were just that much more better. And so that's why, so like, you know, and ever since I, you know, that helped me a lot because I now know I don't take, I never take auditions personally because I know it's like, so when I am picked, it's, it's fantastic, but I just don't take it personally because I know how competitive it is. And it could be, you know what, it's just, um, just, that, just that little something. And sometimes like I know with the one project we were casting, I loved this one actor and the director hated her. And um, I fought for her to get the part and she got it, but um, you know, but it was, um, but sometimes it's something like that, like, you know, he really liked this other girl. Um, and, um, you know, so sometimes it's something it's something like that, where it's, you, 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 you would have gotten the role had, you know, they gone with what the, the director wanted, but the producer said, no, 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 you have to have this person. So it's, it's all. Yeah. <laughs> well, and then sometimes it could be, no, you know what? No, I don't like that actress. She reminds me of my ex-wife. I mean, it yes. could be, it, it's not even on their ability to act or their social right. media. Right. It's like, uh, no, 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 that she, you know, he or she reminds me of a blank who did this to me. No, I'm not going to work with that person. And you're like, it's not even on you. You know, it's, not, it, right. it's, it's, it's just like, it's got nothing. I mean, well, one woman who auditioned for my one movie in Australia, she came in and, um, it came down to the way she was dressed. She had her hair and pigtails and she was wearing jeans and the role was for a very classy mother. And she didn't look like that at all. And I thought she was terrible, but the director thought she was wonderful. And he said to me, let's give her another chance. And then he spoke to her and the next, she came in for the next, for the next audition with her hair up, dressed at very class. And I, and I saw it, I was like, yeah, okay. She's perfect for the role, but it's just funny. Like sometimes how you dress or something can, um can work against you. So it's, I'm always trying to like imagine how the character would dress, which sometimes isn't hard, easy to do when you've just been given a few sides, you kind of just have to use your imagination. But, um, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's sometimes just something as simple as that is like, oh, wow. Yeah, actually, they actually, I didn't see that. They it would be wrong. And there's, yeah. and there's a fine line because sometimes, you know, uh, with men, you know, maybe you've got a little bit of scruff yes. and, and, and you're like, well, I can either leave it like this or I can shave it. And then you're like, well, I can just leave it like this because they can imagine that I would look like that. But a lot of times they can't imagine that. So you yeah, almost want to so give true. them. And, and make a decision. It could be oh, absolutely 100% right. It could be meh, or it could be so wrong. But, you know, it, it, you just, you never know. You just, we just have to well, keep true. And, doing yeah. it. And, and sometimes you can't, and sometimes people look completely different, like with facial hair. 
So it's very um. So yeah, it it is. It's 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 a tricky one. Like I know with the guy who played Zach, the romantic lead in Jodea, we initially were going to cast Judd Nelson in the role. Um, and Judd um was shooting a movie in Europe, which ended up going over, and they couldn't. He couldn't make it back in time. And as I said, we only had the six week window, so we had to recast. And so um the guy who auditioned for Zach was initially going to play the role of Jodea's boyfriend. And John, the director, said to me, no, um, he'd be great as Zach. Let's audition him. And I said, oh, come on. No, he's too handsome for Zach. I mean, not that Judd Nelson isn't handsome. It's like I just expected Zach, the lead, to have more rugged, kind of bad boy handsome. Whereas Jeff, who plays the lead, if you see the poster, is very clean cut, very um, all-American type of handsome. So um, anyway, he auditioned, was fantastic. But we kind of made him grow a beard. And we kind of did stuff so he kind of looked like he sort of drank a lot and stuff because that's the character's meant to be and I, I thought he pulled it off really well but at first like when John said no I think he could do it I was like ah, he's too pretty he doesn't look like the sort of bad the sort of bad boy director type um but no he did it and but yeah but amazing the, the beard gave it a huge um made a huge difference yeah, yeah. I, I like to I like to think that I've lost a few roles because I'm too pretty as well but uh I, yes, yeah. I'm sure you have I'm sure you have <laughs> that's thank you problem. <laughs> and I, I agree 100 percent paul um i do love the fact that um that that you know he that um in introducing jodia that he got the part and because it looks very nice he's it, it it's it's classy and i think it fits it yes fits really yes well. um, no it's yeah Thank you, Chloe. So, Chloe, is there anything that you would like to promote that you're currently doing that you would like to talk about? Um, just uh, introducing Jodea right now. We're just trying to get um, as many people watching as possible. I just want to get us out there even more. So, yeah, we're on Amazon Prime. We're on iTunes, Google Play, YouTube, um, all the main platforms. Um, but I think Amazon and I, you know, the two that have the specials on this week, but yeah, just, um, do check us out because I think it is a, I mean, I think it is a movie that, uh, appeals to people of all ages, all sexes, all, um, it's just, it's just, a, it's just a sweet, funny movie. So I'm looking forward to watching it. And I know you are too, Paul. Um, a hundred percent. I think what we should, we should tell people kind of what the date is. Uh, and I know not to put any more work on you, AJ, because I know you're so fast in getting these out. But we're in about the third week of November, is that right? Uh, so if 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 uh, people can get it, they they get it for half price. But you know, it should also uh, be uh, you know you should just watch it no matter no matter the price. But if you can if you can get it this week, uh, and I'm sure the podcast will probably be up in a couple of days. It's Friday yeah. right now, but uh, uh, so th there'll be time for people to to watch this and then uh, download the movie for half price. I think that's fantastic. Absolutely, absolutely, yes, well. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, we'll go ahead and do that. And also, um, uh, Chloe, we have to start. Uh, it's gone so fast. I've enjoyed. You've been a wonderful guest. It's, oh, no, we're gonna have to, We're going to have to start wrapping it up soon. But before we go, I have one more question, and then we're going to do our heart messages. So my question is, um, how can people follow you and get in contact? Let's say a producer wants to have you in sure. her movie. Um, or his movie. Sure. How can they um, well, I'm on Instagram, um, Chloe Tracos official, Chloe Tracos underscore official. There's only one of me. So far, no one's impersonated me, which, um, uh, you know, um, <laughs> so, uh, but that, that's probably the main way. Um, I also have a Facebook page, Chloe Tracos. Um, and, um, yeah, I mean, those are say the two main ways. I mean, you can also reach me on IMDb by going through my manager, but yeah, but I mean, Facebook and Instagram, you know, I'm pretty contactable through them. Yep. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much for that, Chloe. And now we're going to do our heart messages. You know, we close the show each week with our heart messages. It's a motto or something you want to say, a message to the world uh, that's on your heart. And we always love to do that. So we're going to start with you, Paul. What is your heart message for this week to the world? Wow. Uh, I'm, I'm almost stumped this week, but, but I want to take a lot of the things that were kind of said during this, you know, and it's almost, you know, not where you come from, it's it's kind of where, where you end up, but using all those experiences, you know, like being born in Africa and then, you know, moving to Australia and then coming to the U.S., but taking all those experiences, which I'm sure have helped craft, uh, you know, Chloe, you, your life and your career. And it is really sometimes, you know, it really is, it's such a cliche, but you know, it's about the journey. It's not the destination. And we're still right in the middle of our journeys. So this is great. Uh, you also brought up some things that, that I feel 
you know, all actors should take writing classes and, and maybe business classes as well. Just right. like writers should take acting classes, not because that's what you want to do, but because it kind of puts you in the other person's shoes so that, you know, as a writer, right. you can write better. You can write gooder if, <laughs> if you're a writer for, for because you know what actors are going through. And yeah. as 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 actors, you then also know. I mean, you should also know how to do everything on a set, whether it's the key grips, lighting, not to take their jobs, but to, you know, wardrobe yes. and make them because now you can like sympathize, empathize with them when they're asking you, you know, they're asking you to do certain things for a certain reason. So I think it will make a well-rounded performer to be able to empathize with other people. Um, so I, I, th I guess maybe that's my heart message. And also follow me at Paul Vato. Just go to paulvato.com and all of my links are there. And Vato.tv if you want to buy my book, The Kama Susia, and Vato Cigars if you'd like Vato Cigars. But yeah, PaulVato.com gets you. Are you on Instagram? I am on Instagram. I will find Paul you on Vato. Instagram. Yes. It's, um, Let's uh, connect. And I would love to work with you, Chloe, one day. I hope I, I would get love to work with you, with you too. Um, absolutely. Um, no, for sure. Um, but yeah, no, thank you. Um, so I guess my message is to everyone out there just to, to follow your dream and expect rejection, but don't let that stop you. Um, and just just persist. And when you do when when you do get the breaks and when you do start to succeed, it makes it that much sweeter. I love that. Beautiful gems of wisdom. And so I love how you both are so appreciative of your life and the and the industry. And I just want to thank you so much for being on my show. I love I love it so much. This, this is a great show. You made it wonderful, Chloe. Thank you. Oh, thank also, you, Paul. And my heart message is be an example to all in the world in what you say, in the way you live, in the way we live, and in our love, in our faith, whatever that is, and in our purity so mm -hmm. that we can be um, we can give complete attention to these matters, throw us, throw ourselves uh, into tasks wholeheartedly, 100%, so that everyone will see our progress. And by uh, living an example of a life like that, we can inspire others. I agree. That's a beautiful message, AJ. Thank you so much. And it was a wonderful show. And it was just so great talking to you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chloe. You have been absolutely brilliant. And we're so happy with meeting you. You are our friend and family now. Oh, thank and you. And um, well, I hope I hope we will we will stay in touch. And um, yes. Definitely. I'd love to. Please, please stay in touch. We want to want to uh you're our friend for life, right, Paul? A hundred percent. I love this. Thank you for being here. <laughs> and thank you. And so until next time, bye-bye for now. Thank you so much. Have a good one.